again. I'm Tom, I'm a secondary school teacher of 12 years now, and this is the second of three videos from a pastoral perspective, focusing particularly on year seven and the transition from primary to secondary school. Um, if you do find them useful or interesting at all, please do click on the subscribe button. If not, bye-bye. So what I'm gonna focus on now is working on relationships. My school, uh, as an example, has over 50 feeder schools, which means when the year sevens arrive, um, there's lots of them for a start, and they come from such a dramatic and gigantic different uh, pool of places, schools, environments. Um, they go from a place where obviously they are very well known by all of their peers and all of the staff, and they come to a place where they are not known at all. They might have some people from their own primary school who have come with them. They may or may not be friends with them. So when they come into my classroom, for example, there might be someone else from their same school, but the vast majority, at least at the beginning, are gonna be unknown to them. Um, and it's obviously like that squared around the school. And I can see it because particularly at the beginning of the year, I walk around uh, the school, I'm you know, going to get a cup of tea in the corridor, whatever it is, and I see the year sevens walking around. And often I find it's this, a touch melodramatic, but I do really feel it. I find it kind of heartbreaking looking at them because you can see written all over them just how vulnerable they are. And I can understand that because they have gone from an environment so well known to them and so secure to one almost utterly alien and one in which they are by far the smallest entity within a square radius of I don't know what. So one of the first and most important things that they're gonna set about doing is establishing relationships with their teachers, obviously with their peers, and to an extent with themselves. And as a teacher, you can play a hugely significant role in managing that process. So thinking about for a start how you manage your relationship with them as new students. Now obviously, the first things to talk about are typically boundaries and expectations, and those are crucial, of course they are. But one thing I think that is perhaps maybe not talked about quite enough, um, uh, probably because a lot of teachers tend to dismiss this kind of talk, or a lot of people do anyway, um, is the importance of engaging with them personally, of asking them about the things that they've seen and known, and giving them the chance to tell you. Um, it might have nothing or little to do with whatever you might be covering in the curriculum, and it can be difficult to do because we just don't always have the time, you know? Uh, I can understand that, but I do think if you want them to feel valued, then they, like everyone else, like all of us, need to feel that the things that they have seen and done are interesting and are appreciated, so you need to engage with them personally. Secondly, they've got their relationships with their peers. Now these are obviously evolving throughout secondary school and sometimes they're fantastic and sometimes they're profoundly destructive and it's always incredibly dramatic. Um, but one thing you can do as a teacher in the classroom is make sure that you are always identifying and encouraging the kind of actions and attitudes that promote healthy relationships. So when you see someone being actively supportive whether or not it's with a friend, preferably with it's, when it's with someone who they would not typically engage with. That's something you have to champion. Um, and it's perhaps not at the forefront of your mind to do so because there are things that as a teacher you just have to cover. And there are also behavioural issues, you know, bubbling all over the place that you need to keep on top of. So identifying those kind of, those words or those gestures of support and decency and kindness and respect might not always be the thing that immediately calls or requires your attention but I think if you do make an effort to focus on those then they will see that that's exactly the kind of behaviour that you prize and they will aspire to it and the impact that's going to have on the climate within your classroom is I think profound. Now can we measure that academically? Not that I know of which means it's probably not talked about or believed in to the extent that I think really it should be. Uh, you can't measure it so how can you be sure of its worth? Well I am sure of its worth so, relationships with you, their teacher, relationships with each other. If you can get those things right, or at least play your part in driving them in the right direction, then you are gonna result, or you're gonna end up with, a classroom and a set of relationships in which all the people involved, they feel safe and they feel respected and they feel appreciated. And that is exactly the kind of, to use a very old and tired educational metaphor, but it's a good one. That's exactly the kind of soil in which you can expect them to grow as we hope they might.